If you're interested in starting your own online course, you clicked on the right video. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can get started with your own online course, which you can then sell online. About two years ago, I was actually able to do the exact same thing and launch my course to do over $100,000 in revenue within the first 12 months of starting. In today's video, I'm going to lay out the steps that I took in order to get that done. Starting off with step number one, your course topic. This of course is extremely important because if you create a course around a topic that no one cares about, it's going to be hard to get sales. Instead, you always want to validate that there's demand for whatever it is that you're trying to do. In the best case scenario, you already have an audience. If you do, you can easily figure out what it is you need to create. I did the exact same thing. So my business is YouTube automation. I was then publishing content about that business model all over the internet. And I started getting a lot of questions about one very specific topic, which was Yuri, how can I build my team in order to outsource my videos, which is a key component in my business. Because I was getting that question over and over again, I recognized that a lot of people needed guidance with that. And because of that, that is exactly what I made my first course about. I was teaching people how they can set up their own online video production team so that they would make the videos instead of themselves. With this course alone, I was able to generate over $48,000, which for the first ever online course that I created is definitely not a bad result. So if you do already have that audience, try and figure out what they desperately need. You probably get a lot of questions, DMs, emails about the exact same topic or even exact same question. That right there would be the perfect indication to make a course about that exact thing. What I recommend you do as well, if you get those emails, DMs and comments, is talk to these people to try and figure out what exactly they need help with. You can even jump on a quick Zoom call for 10 minutes to know exactly what it is they're looking for. By doing that with multiple people, you can find a pattern in what it is that they're looking for. You can then make your course around that offer and there you go, you just created a market fit product. So to sum that up, the topic of your course, try and figure out what your audience needs. If you don't have an audience yet, figure out what other people are currently selling to make sure that there's an audience for whatever it is that you're trying to sell. Never ever just randomly create a course about a random topic where you've got no clue whether it sells or doesn't sell. That's the worst thing to do. As long as you avoid that, you should be fine. Which brings me to step number two, creating the course curriculum, figuring out what exactly it is that you're going to show in your course and then creating a layout with chapters, AKA modules with lessons underneath them. To get that done isn't that complicated. In fact, it's actually pretty simple. You can use sticky notes, you can use your phone notes on your laptop, or use a project management tool. This is what I did. This is my project management tool. This is inside Trello. As you can see, this is the course curriculum for one of my actual courses that has generated over six figures in revenue. This right there is for demonstration purposes. I'll get to that in a bit. As you can see, this is what it looks like. So I had a preparation tab opened up so that I know exactly what I need to get done. And then next up, I started writing down the curriculum for my course. So number one, niche and format. That would be the first module inside my course. Then if we go down, we have the name, which is called the fundamental phase. And then right here, the lessons. So understanding the format, finding your format, high CPM versus low CPM, short-term versus long-term success, and the list goes on. So I have simply built out the entire curriculum bit by bit. So this right there would be called a list. And then underneath them, we've got cards, which basically represent the lessons of my course. So I want you to do the same. You can do this on Trello or any other project management software on paper, whatever it is, write down the chapter, AKA the module, and then underneath that, write down the lessons that you need. You need to make sure to not write out the entire curriculum within one day. And then that's it. Because what will happen is that you're going to forget stuff, or maybe there's a better way to do it. But because you've got that tunnel vision, you've been creating your curriculum for the last three hours. You're not really seeing it clear anymore. So what I recommend you do write down the entire curriculum on the top of your head right away. Then the day after that, come back to it and see if you can make any adjustments to make it better. Maybe you forgot something, etc. One day after that, do the same. And then one week after that, do the same just to double check, just to get the best curriculum for your students. Let me quickly show you what my curriculum looks like inside my course. So as you can see, this is my prominent course search automation. And as you can see, this is then the fundamental phase, which you can find back on chapter one here as well. And then we've got understanding the format, finding your format, high CPM versus low CPM. So because I build it up, 
So because I built out my curriculum in advance, it was very easy to set all of this up as well, as well as for the students, it's pretty easy to understand. So that's it, when it comes down to your curriculum, don't make it too complicated, write it out, the day after, come back to it, make it better, do the same the next day, and then one week after, and that should be totally fine. Which brings us to the next step, is choosing your format. There's actually many ways to put together your course. It can be a video course where you show your face, it can be a video course where you only screen record, you can include text, PDF guides, Word documents, links, downloadable files, etc. So what I want you to do, and this is just for your sake, write down how exactly you wanna produce your course. So do you want the video? Do you want screen recording? Do you want quizzes, PDF guides, etc.? So that after that, you've got to clean your head, but you also know what exactly you need in terms of tools and equipment in order to produce your course. So let's say that I need only screen recording, that I need to figure out the best tool for that, which in my case is OBS Studio. If you need a face cam, you need to either get a camera or you can simply film with your iPhone. Very easy to do, and the quality from that is pretty good. Quick tip, if you've got the latest iPhone, put the zoom in 3x and put the camera a bit further away to get a better view. Now, I don't wanna scare you off with this. In fact, you don't need any fancy equipment. I'm recording this with a microphone that costs about $80, but you can also get it done with about $30. In terms of camera, use your iPhone and you're pretty much set up. So what I want you to do per chapter, write down how you're gonna produce the course. Is it video only, screen recording only, PDF guides, etc. Just to get a very clear how you're gonna make your course, which in my opinion is not unimportant at all, right? With that being said, we're getting to step number four, which is the course name. Now the course name, many people think is very important. However, this is one of those things that you're probably gonna spend a lot of time on. However, it's not really that important. It's not a money producing activity. It's not gonna bring any cash to you. In fact, what I want you to do is take one hour out of your day, write down every single thing that comes up in your mind, either take one of those or use ChatGPT in order to generate names. I'll show you how that works right now. So with this prompt right here, I'm making a course about XYZ, in my case, how to grow a YouTube channel. Can you give me 30 names for my online course about XYZ? You simply send the prompt and then as you can see, ChatGPT is gonna generate all of those names. Tube growth, YouTube mastery, channel magnifier, tube crafters, channel search, rise on YouTube, exactly that. So from these, you can either just pick one you like and use it, or you can take inspiration from here and come up with a slightly different name. Apart from that, what I recommend you do, take one active hour to write all of this stuff down and think about it. At that moment, after 60 minutes, choose the best name that you currently have, either stick with that, or what you might see happen is that if you're going for a walk, you're showering, etc. You're basically taking some downtime. All of a sudden, what I always find is that the name out of that just comes up in mind, and then I go with that name. Overall, you are the person that makes the course successful, not the name. If we take a look at Mr. Beast, the biggest YouTuber, absolute goat, he's fantastic. However, the name is kind of random. If you were to say Mr. Beast to someone who doesn't know who he is without any context, he has no clue what the channel is about or what they're up to, etc. So Mr. Beast made Mr. Beast a great name, but before that, it is just a wacky name in my opinion. And the same goes for your course. So don't overcomplicate it, spend one active hour, from there just see what pops up in your mind and choose any of those. And then, step number five is choosing the hosting platform for your course. Where is it that you're gonna upload your course and the students will be able to consume it? There's actually so many available, it really does depend on what it is that you're trying to do. For example, do you only have an online course or do you also want a community tab? Would you like your students to reach out to you? Would you like to do coaching calls, etc.? So what I'll do now is show you the platform that I use myself and why, but I also want you to know that I've made an in-depth comparison about many different platforms. I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below. So here's the platform I use. This is called school.com. Recently, a lot of people are switching to this platform. It is built and founded by Sam Ovens, which is a big entrepreneur, which is probably why this platform is so great. So as you can see right at the bat, this is what it looks like. It is very minimalistic in terms of the layout, which means there's zero distractions. Plus, it is also extremely easy to use. So we've got the community tab right here, which is basically where you can share stuff to your audience, but they can also make a post themselves. So they can engage with each other, which in my opinion, is fantastic for online courses. It really does add another dimension to just having a video program. If you just have a video program that people can watch, yes, that is helpful. However, 
if they can find like-minded people trying to get the same thing done that they can easily find in the community tab, that is invaluable to me. Next up, we've got the classroom, which is one tab away. In here, you can host your course. In here, you can add unlimited courses and you can have unlimited members. So this is one of my courses. I'll open this up for you so that you can see what it looks like. There we go. So these are my chapters and then the lessons in here, understanding the format. This is what it looks like. Once again, zero distractions. Let me quickly play a video for you. So this is what it looks like. Your students will be able to change the speed. They will be able to change the quality as well as have transcripts available. They can easily put it in full screen. All of that is indeed there. So I can put this in 1080 and there we go. Very easy and user friendly, which is what I like. As soon as they finish watching a video, they can mark it as done. And there you go. They can, they can then track their progress for the entire course in this bar right here. So I finished 22% off this course. And then finally, another core component is the calendar tab. This is basically making it very easy for you to host coaching calls or any other events or announcements. Let's say that you're just like me doing a coaching call every Wednesday, 7 p.m. You can set this up automatically and you can make it recurring. So this is set up in my community forever. So next year, the year after, etc., there will be a call at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. So I can now click right here and then join the call. That's what the student would do, which is why I chose this, because in my program, I have a video program. I have a community so that they can engage with each other. Plus, I'm doing coaching calls. So school.com is the only platform I was able to find that easily can do all of that stuff with one sign in for you as well as your student all one click away, because when they sign in, they'll end up right here. So if they want to watch the course, click classroom and they have arrived. If they want to join the call, click calendar click here and they can join the call, making it extremely easy to use for you as well as your students. So in my opinion, this is a no brainer. It is priced at 99 bucks a month. You can get a 14 day free trial as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below, as well as a 40 minute full tutorial showing you how I set up my own community. With that being said, all that's left now is step number six, actually make your course. So start making your course whether that would be typing, creating outlines, recording, starting the Word documents, PDF guides, whatever format you chose, start making your course. This is the main activity that you actually need to get done in order to get success in the first place. Once it is then done, you can upload it to school.com and then watch the video down below in order to set that up. So here's a quick summary for you. Number two, build out your course curriculum so that you know exactly what it is that you're going to teach and cover it in your course. Take your time with this, come back to it about every single day to figure out if you forgot something or you can make an improvement. Next up, choose your format. So how are you going to produce your course? Then come up with the name. Once again, don't overcomplicate it. Number five, choose your hosting platform. Highly recommend school and then actually make the course. So all resources that I mentioned will be found in the description down below, free trials, tutorials, etc., to help you out the best way. If you still have questions, let me know in the comments down below too, and then I'll see you there. I hope you have a good day and you can finally launch your course. Good luck.